These are examples 3.3 till 3.6, and we will find the total response of an undamped system for different forcing frequencies and for a set of initial conditions. We have that the constant of the spring is 4,000 newtons over meters. We have the mass of the system equals to 10 kilograms, and that are allowed us to calculate the natural frequency of the system, which is square root of k over m. The natural frequency of the system is equal to 20 radians over second. The static deflection of the problem is the force over the constant of the spring. The force magnitude is 400 newtons divided by 4,000 give us a 0 0.1 static deflection of the spring due to the external force. We have the initial conditions equals to the initial displacement is 0 0.1 meters and the initial velocity is 10 meters over second. The total response of the system will be the homogeneous response plus the particular response. The homogeneous response is due to the initial conditions and the particular response is to the external force applied. Since this is a undamped system, we have that the homogeneous response is equal to C1 cosine of omega t plus C2 sine of omega t. And the particular response is the static deflection times the amplification factor times cosine of omega t. The amplification factor is 1 over 1 minus r squared. C1, we already found that in our theory, Please look at your formula sheet. X, C1 is x0, which is the initial displacement, minus s0 over k times the, the amplification factor, cosine of omega t. And then C2 is velocity over natural frequency, and that's multiplied by sine of omega nt. And then we have the particular solution. Remember that we have to find C1 and C2 for the total solution. Even though those constants represent a constant of the homogeneous solution, we have to find it for the total solution. So let's solve the problem for the first frequency, which is omega equals 10 radians over second. As you see, this is a frequency that is less than the natural frequency. Therefore, we have a value for R equals 0 0.5. That means that it's less than 1. If we substitute this value into our amplification factor, this is equal to 1.33333. And C1, which is what we already said, initial displacement minus F0 over K times N, and C2 omega 0 over omega N, we find them to be 0 0.033333 or 3 periodic and C2 is 0 0.5. And the amplitude for the particular solution will be 0 0.13 periodic. This allowed us to write the solution, which is C1 cosine of omega n, which is 20, t plus 0 0.5 sine of omega t plus the amplitude of the particular response cosine of 10 t. All this is in meters. This is the graph of this solution. You see we have a periodic function, but it's a combination of two different frequencies because we have the natural frequency and the forcing frequency, which is 10 radians over second. Let's move to the next, where the forcing frequency is 20 radians over second, and then we have our frequency ratio is being equals to 20 over 20, and that gives us equals to 1. So that's when we are in resonance. The Amplification factor, which is then 1 over 1 minus r squared, will be 
1 over 0, which is infinity. That means that our response is the following. We have x0 cosine of omega t plus velocity over omega n, t sine of omega t, and then we combine the two components that have f f0 over k, 1 over 1 minus r squared, and this is 0 over 0. So we have to apply the L'Hopital rule. The response is x0 cosine of omega t plus velocity, initial velocity over omega n, sine of omega n, t, and f0 over k, omega n, t, over 2, sine of omega n, t. As you see, this third component, the amplitude is multiplied by t. That means that this will grow without bounds with time. So the solution is 0 0.1 coseno, cosine of omega n, which is 20, plus 0 0.5 sine of omega n, plus t sine of omega n t. The graph looks something like that, so it grows without bounds. The third case is when the forcing frequency is 20.1 radians per second. Remember that our natural frequency is 20 radians per second, so our frequency ratio will be equal to 20.1 divided by 20. That is, a, those two frequencies are very similar but not equal. So R is equal to 1.005. We are close to resonance but not at resonance. When we calculate the amplification factor, we get that this is 1 over 1 minus r squared that gives us a value of negative 99.75. Negative because r is greater than 1. This value is very high, so we have the response, which is the static deflection times the amplification factor, will be very high. Our constants C1 is 10.075 and C2 is 0 0.5, therefore the response will be equals to C1, which is 10.075 cosine of omega t plus C2, which is 0 0.5 sine of omega t, And then I have the third component, which is F0 over K times our magnification factor that gives us a value of 9.975 cosine of the forcing frequency, which is 20.1. If you see the graph that we obtained before and this one, they look very similar. So it seems like the response is growing without bounds. But I like to zoom out and look what happened and compare those two answers. And as you see, the red one will grow without bounds and it will not stop growing. In the contrary, the yellow one, which is what is called beets, it grows but it diminish and it will grow and it diminish and it will grow and it diminish. So that's an answer a little bit different from when we are in resonance and that frequency where the we get two maximum or that it goes from zero against to zero is what is called the beat frequency. The last case is when omega is 30 radians over second that's a frequency that is bigger than the omega n, therefore we get that 30 over 20 is equals to r equals 1.5. That's r greater than 1. The magnification factor, which is 1 over 
1 minus r squared is equals to 0 0.8 and is a negative value because r is greater than 1. The constant 1 gives us a value of 0 0.18 and c2 gives us a value of, of 0 0.5 again. Then my response is equals to C1 times cosine of natural frequency, so it's 0 0.18 cosine of omega of 20t plus C2, which is 0 0.5 sine of omega t. And then I have the static deflation times the magnification factor, which is then 0 0.08 cosine of 30t, which is my forcing frequency and that's in meters. When I graph this answer, give me something like that. As in the first case, this is a periodic function, combination of sinusoidal and cosinusoidal wave. Now in this graph over here, I have drawn the fourth different case. Is the case A was when we had a forcing frequency less than my natural frequency that was r less than one the second case was when we have the force frequency equals to 20 radians over second and that gave us r, r equals one we were in resonance as you see the response grows without bound the third case is when we have a force in frequency 20.1 very close to resonance but not equals to resonance and that's what is called beats in this case the answer grows but it will diminish and it will grow again and it will be diminish again so it doesn't grow without bound but it has a very high amplitude the last case is when we had a forcing frequency equals to 30 radians over a second, which is uh, greater than the natural frequency. Therefore, we have our R value 1.5, which is bigger than one. And we got a force, uh, we got a response that is a periodic function again.